Let me greet all of you this morning in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Well, indeed, if it were not for Christ on our side, we would not be here on today. So let's begin our worship by giving him praise, by giving him honor, and giving him the glory. For indeed, he is worthy of all of our praise. Amen. If God has been good to you this week, amen, give him some more praise today. Amen. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalms 116, where the psalmist declares, I love the Lord, amen, because he has heard my voice and my supplication, amen. Thanks be to God who's a God who hears and answers prayer, amen. He says, I love the Lord because he heard my voice and my supplications. And particularly, he said later on in the psalm, he said, I prayed to God and delivered me from my bonds. If you've ever been bound by anything and God has set you free, amen, you ought to give him some praise today in the name of Jesus, for he is a God that does loosen the bonds that shackles us in life. Come on, let's go to that God in prayer here on today. God, we thank you for blessing us to be here on yet another Lord's Day. Master, we thank you in particular as we focus our minds for a moment on the psalmist's words in Psalms 116. God, we love you for so many things. We love you because you're a good provider put food on our tables, clothes on our backs, roof over our head. Thank you. We love you because of how you provide for us. God, we, we love you because of the peace that you give us. But God, you're the one who rides on the stormy waves of life just to come see about us and whisper into our situation, peace be still. We love you for how you keep our hearts fixed and our minds regulated. Thank you for being a God of peace. Thank you for being a God of provision. There are so many things that we love you for, but the psalmist says we love you today because you're a God that hears and answers prayer. Thank you for being a prayer hearing God. Thank you for being a God who hears the voice of your children when they call out to you. And then God, we thank you for being the God who not only hears our voice, but then you also heed our voice. You come to see about us, you give us guidance, you give us deliverance. So God, we want to tell you thank you for being a deliverer today. For somebody even in the course of this week, you've provided some type of deliverance. Somebody's life was bound and shackled by some situation. But you showed yourself mighty and you set them free. Thank you for being a deliverer today. So we lift up your name. We give you honor and we give you glory. Ultimately, we thank you for delivering us from the penalty of sin in Jesus our Christ. And not only are we free from the penalty of sin, but thank you for Jesus who prayed to you, the Father, and you dispatched our helper, our paraclete, the Holy Ghost, who now gives us power over sinful behavior. Thank you today for being a great deliverer. Now we welcome your presence in this place. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. May all that we say and do be pleasing and acceptable in thine sight. Bless again to the glory of your name and the building of your people. And we'll be ever so careful to give you and you alone all of the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all of God's children say amen. Amen. And amen. Let's lift up the name of God one more time. Let's praise him and bless him today for his awesomeness. 
toward us, his children. Amen. It's good to be here on yet another Lord's Day. Thank you for all that you do and continue to do week after week. Amen. Um, by way of helping us, by way of our worship experience. Thank you for your continued faithfulness financially. Amen. We thank you for all of the love and kindness you show uh, there. Amen. Because you do what we do. It allows us to do what we do. Amen. By way of doing ministry and blessing not only our church family, but even our broader community. So thank you for your love and your support. Remembering that generous hearts changes hearts as we strive to be the church in the community for the hearts of the community. Amen. And one of the things we do, we do justice. Amen. As part of our mission, as part of our outreach, as part of meeting our goal of being the church in the community for the hearts of the community. Amen. We do the work of justice so you know what tomorrow is. Amen. Tomorrow is our build Nehemiah action assembly. Amen. Let's give God some praise for being able to come together to do justice. Amen. So each year, amen, we gather once a year, amen, uh, to meet with those in our, that are in places of authority and power to help address particular areas of justice or injustice in our community. So we invite you all out tomorrow night. Uh, there are 26 congregations part of our BUILD coalition. Uh, BUILD stands for Building a United uh, uh, Interfaith Lexington through direct action. Amen. We believe in direct action, nonviolent uh, direct action, nonviolent protest as a way of achieving uh, justice in areas of injustice. Tomorrow night, we'll be addressing the areas of violence in our, in our community, uh, an issue on mental health, amen, as well as housing, amen. And so we look forward to doing that, and we, look, we invite you to be there, amen. Uh, each congregation pledges each year to have so many number of people present, amen. We're expecting 1,500 people present on tomorrow night at Central Bank Center, amen. 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 Now, our part is 60. Amen. 60 out of 1,500 is not that much, but it's a lot. Amen. Because every head counts. Every person's presence matters because we believe that by galvanizing our people power, that's how we make change in our city. And there are so many things that we've been able to do as a result of doing that, and that's how we choose to do justice. So if you plan on attending tomorrow night, we'll be at the Central Bank Center. Amen. Doors open at 6.30. Amen. We will start promptly at 7 o'clock p.m. Amen. If you plan to attend, hopefully you've been, we've been contacted with one of our justice ministry team members or network members. Amen. And if you have, or if you haven't, consider this uh, my, my personal invitation to you to Join us tomorrow night. Amen. You know how we do with Bill. We're not there all night. We come in. We get started on time. Amen. Do what we got to do and send everybody uh, home for the evening. Amen. If you plan on attending, amen, as you exit the sanctuary today, there are, uh, there are registration cards, blue and yellow. They're all the same. Amen. Take one of those cards. You want to fill that out because you want to stop by the registration table on your, on, when you in, enter into the assembly on this coming, uh, on tomorrow night. And that's your card that you give your card and turn it in and they'll, they'll, they'll admit you into the, uh, into the event. So again, pick up one of those cards on your way out. And if you don't get one, come anyway. We have more than enough. We look forward to seeing all of you. So I'm, I'm, I'm counting on you to help us meet our goal of having 60 persons present on tomorrow night to do justice there at the Central Bank Center. With that being said, we're trying to accommodate you the best that we can. We know that now there's parking at the arena now. It's $7, um, a flat rate of $7 for the time that you are down there. There are two things that we're doing to try and make it more advantageous or helpful for you um, by way of attending. We will be driving our church van on tomorrow for those who would like to um, get receive transportation to Central Bank Center, be here at 6 o'clock tomorrow. Amen. Van will leave promptly at 6.15. Amen. Van will leave promptly at 6.15. So be here by 6 so you can get loaded. We want to be on the bus and out on our way to the center um, by 6.15. Amen. Also, if you would like to possibly carpool, amen, we'll meet here again at 6 o'clock, no later than 6 o'clock, so that we can leave together at 6.15. So that might also alleviate being able, so many people being, having to pay the $7, all right? So those are a couple things that we're doing to try and uh, help you out in getting to the build um, um, 
event near my action on tomorrow night, all right? So as we say with Bill, those who know it, let us rise up and amen. amen. One more time, let us rise up and yeah. amen. We look forward to seeing you on tomorrow night at the Central Bank Center doors open at 6.30. We begin at 7 o'clock. If you love the Lord, say amen. amen. If you're glad the Lord loves you, say amen. Come on and welcome these children here on the day as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. God bless you.
Amen. Let's give our youth another hand this morning. Amen. We're glad that he reigns. Amen. Amen forever and ever. Amen. Let's give him another hand this morning. Thank God for them. We encourage them. And those who are continuing to work with them, thank God. Amen. And to God be the glory. Amen. Again, we're always grateful for our music ministry, our audio video ministry, our hospitality ministry, our health and deacons ministry. Let's give all those persons another hand today. We don't want to underestimate nor overlook uh, those persons because of the things that they do on a weekly basis. Amen. To provide both this in-person worship experience as well as our virtual worship experience. So um, to our virtual audience here there, you just do an amen in the chat or uh, emoji clapping, clap hands or something or whatever. Amen. Uh, telling us know that you appreciate uh, what we do uh, by way of blessing uh, you week after week with this worship experience. Amen and amen. As I've already highlighted, next on tomorrow we'll be gathering to do justice. Amen. So, amen. Uh, you probably know what the day's sermonic focus is going to be. <laughs> justice. Um, but the Lord has led us Back to our Resurrection Sunday text uh, to highlight some aspects of justice in that experience as we look at it here on today. So I invite your attention to the gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 24. We want to highlight or use for a platform for preaching that Emmaus Road experience, and in particular the conversation or a portion of the conversation uh, that uh, Jesus was having with the two on the Emmaus Road. Amen. Luke chapter number 24, beginning at verse 13. And we'll read down through verse 21. Amen. You should be familiar with the story here on today. Luke chapter 24. Beginning at verse 13, I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. If you have it and you're ready to go, say amen. 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 Read along with me if you don't mind. Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself, drew near and went with them. But the eyes were restrained so that they did not know him or know it was him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and you are sad? Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which there happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers 
delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all of this, today is the third day since these things have happened. Amen. Justice and Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Justice and Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Here on this blessed Lord's Day on the Sunday leading into our Nehemiah action assembly on tomorrow, the Lord has uh, guided us back to this particular text of focus. Amen. Uh, our Nehemiah action um, is based upon the method of doing justice that is found in the book of Nehemiah. Where when the people were taken advantage of by the landlords and landowners in Nehemiah's day, um, they went to Nehemiah and complained about what was going on and addressing the problem, the Bible said that Nehemiah gathered the people and brought before them the landlords and landowners who were unjustly dealing with the people. And as a result of that Nehemiah action, justice was served and unjust landlords and landowners reformed their ways and provided just means by way of dealing with the people. That's what's called direct action in a nonviolent manner. Uh, Jesus says something about living by the sword, you die by the sword. But Jesus did not expect for us to stay in oppressive conditions. He was a kind of savior that came about to show us how to deal even with injustice in a world like the one that we live in. It's this Jesus uh, that, 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 that blesses us here on today. Uh, now we've, we're at this particular text in part because many of our build brothers and sisters and sister congregations uh, we'll be looking at or hearing messages from this same text here on today. Uh, many of them uh, are guided by what is called the lectionary. Uh, the lectionary somewhat functions like our Sunday school format, wherein lessons have been prearranged and scriptures have been uh, selected for you to use uh, throughout the course of the year. The lectionary functions in a similar type manner for the lectionary is a pre-collection or pre-selected collection of scriptural readings uh, for the day and each Sunday, amen, has a set of scripture readings uh, according to the lectionary that goes according to the church calendar or the liturgical calendar. Here on today, the lectionary reading is Luke chapter 24. Verses 13, really all the way down through verse number 35. Uh, since we've already hung out here with verses 24, really 25, on Resurrection Sunday morning, amen, I needed not read, go back and read all that. I want to I wanna, I wanna, I wanna hone in on a portion of the conversation that led to Jesus finally revealing to him, to them, who he was on that resurrection Sunday evening. And as part of that conversation there, I, 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 I see, I see, I see justice in the text. Jesus at the center as they were having conversation on the road to Emmaus. The text opens up resurrection Sunday evening. Two of the disciples of Jesus, one named Cleopas, we don't know the name of the other. Many surmise may have been a fellow disciple. Others believe because of the naming of, 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 of the women that followed Jesus uh, and some of the other gospels believe that possibly it was his wife. We don't know. Amen. Uh, but we know that two were traveling 
uh, from Jerusalem back to Emmaus. It says it was a seven-mile journey. Along the way, they were discussing what had just happened. And as they were discussing the fact that Jesus had been condemned and crucified, as they were discussing the mere fact that, uh, that they had, uh, it was the third day and his body was not in the tomb, as they were discussing what, was, what had happened on that day, as they were walking, Jesus joined the conversation. And we don't know why or how, but it said that they did not recognize Jesus as he was walking with them. And he asked them the question, why are you so sad? What, 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 what manner of conversation, what, what's going on that's, that has you so down and out? And they asked the question, are you kidding me? Are you the only stranger or foreigner that's in Jerusalem doing the Passover and don't know what has happened? Something unprecedented has happened. Jesus of Nazareth. Prophet of God, mighty in word and deed, amen, before God and the people. The thing that happened is, is that our chief priests and our rulers condemned him and had him crucified. And, and, and they went on with conversation in verse 20 and verse 21 and said, but we were hoping. Hang on to that. That, 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 that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. That's what we need to park at for the moment because their hopes were built on Jesus redeeming Israel. Right here, when you hear the word redeem, don't think super spiritual right here thing redeemed such as what God did for Israel when he redeemed them out of Egypt the word redeem in the text literally means to release from an oppressive situation the Jews in Jesus day were under the oppressive regime of Rome they were uh, disenfranchised. They were under the thumb of, 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 of Rome and its rule, and they were looking for a savior. They were looking for a modern-day Moses. They, they, they were looking for the promised Davidic king who would set them free from the socio-political oppression of others who didn't give a doggone about them, their families, or their plight in life. That's why their hopes were dashed. They, 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 they were hoping that this ruler, this, this Messiah, this Jesus was going to be the one who would finally get Rome up off our neck so that we could live and explore what you all call today the American dream. We, 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 just, we were just a people that wanted our share and peace of the power. We were thinking it was going to be him. Let me park right there and just say uh, that when I'm on this, on this road to Emmaus, I see justice in Jesus in the mere fact that they were, that their hopes for justice was alive and well. Pre- Crucifixion, pre verse 20, their excitement was raised in verse 19 because it says that Jesus of Nazareth, a prophet of God, mighty in deed and in word. What they were saying was is that Jesus' actions brought us hope for a better tomorrow. There was something about the work of Jesus, amen, that, that, that brought hope for justice. Uh, they, were, they were hoping that Jesus was going to be the one that was going to lead the social revolution. 
They were looking for Jesus to be the one that was finally going to give them the justice that they longed for. It was Jesus that brought them hope that there would be a better tomorrow. Something about the actions of Jesus. Healing sick folk. Holding conversation by seaside. That told the masses that I don't care how dark yesterday was. I see, I see the horizon of tomorrow. They, they, they were people who, who, who observed Jesus' actions. And Jesus literally brought hope for justice. Jesus' actions by way of word and deed, amen, had the people thinking that, yes, our life doesn't have to always be this way. I can have better. My family can have better. Amen. There can be a better tomorrow. Something about Jesus and his actions calls common folk to believe that God still cares about me. Calls them to believe that God still has better for me. I challenge you today, what actions are we engaged in that causes folk around us to have hope for a brighter tomorrow? I know you got yours. I got mine. But not all God's children got shoes. <laughs> Not, not everybody, amen, we'll see it in a minute, has a roof over their heads. Can I fast forward because I don't get there in the conversation? Now, y'all know the story. They travel with Jesus till they get to Emmaus. And the text says that, that, that Jesus took bread and they sat down at a table. And as they sat down at a table, Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks and they recognized him. Can I suggest that the mere fact that the text says that they sat at a table intimates something that ain't said in the text. If they sat at a table, it means they sat at somebody's house. How different the narrative would have been if there was no table because there was no house. <laughs> How different it would have been if the two on the Emmaus road was homeless, where would they have broken bread? <laughs> where would they have seen the vision of Jesus if the two on the Emmaus had nowhere to call home? The narrative might have been a bit different, which says to me, Housing makes a heck of a difference in one's life narrative. Not going to be heavy, just practical. I'm pressure today. Because whatever the actions of Jesus was in the text in verse 19, it caused the people to believe that life can be better. And if life is good for you, don't just be happy with life being good for you. You got to be concerned with how life is for somebody else besides you. If God bless you, one of the ways you show God how much you appreciate him blessing you is for you to turn around and somehow try to be a blessing to somebody else. Jesus, as the Tony Emmaus Road narrated their hopes, they hoped, for a better tomorrow, which means this prophet from Nazareth caused them to believe there could be a better tomorrow. He brought the hope of justice. But he also brought the hope of justice from the place called Nazareth. Amen. I like that too. Because <laughs> he's from Nazareth. He's from Nazareth. When Jesus, uh, Philip, uh, finds out who Jesus is in John's narrative, amen, uh, he went to go tell us, cuz, hey, cuz, I, I think I've found the Messiah. Uh, he's a prophet out of Nazareth. And the response was, y'all good Bible readers, help me preach right here. The response was, can any... Help me preach, somebody. Say it so the, so the, so, so the audience on, on, in virtual land can hear you. Can any what? Good thing 
come out of Nazareth. Which means hopelessness dwells in Nazareth. Nobodyness dwells in Nazareth. The uneducated, disenfranchised lives in Nazareth. You mean to tell me that my hope for a better tomorrow comes from a place of nobodyness, nothingness? Folks in Nazareth, they don't go to grade school. They don't go to no school in Nazareth. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? <laughs> Bible said, yes, good stuff can come out of even the most desolate of places. I just pump, pump, I want to park right there to tell us, amen, if you've ever come from the tracks of Nazareth and you've now made it beyond your Nazareth, you ought to thank God that God is able to bring you out of the Nazareth zone. But let me say it one more time. If the Lord has brought you out of the Nazareth zone, don't forget there's still some folk still living in Nazareth. Isn't it interesting that Jesus could have made his headquarters in Jerusalem and Judea, but it hung out in the region of Galilee. That wasn't the suburbs of the Judean region. <laughs> Jesus hung out in the hood. Yeah, he did. And yet, for those of us been delivered from Nazareth-like places, don't look too kind always on the hood. Preach more. Uh, all I'm trying to tell you is, is, is that Jesus brought hope from a place the other folk has said nothing good can come from there. But I want to declare there's something good everywhere. That's why we do what we do. Because you don't know where the next president is coming from. You don't know where your next city uh, council member is going to come from. You, you, you don't know who the next doctor that's going to be sitting there taking your vitals is going to come from. You don't know where the next nurse is coming from. There's still some good in Nazareth. Jesus on the road to Emmaus. helps us here because uh, he brought hope for justice and their justice was alive and well. The justice was alive and well but then verse 20 happened. Verse 20 happened uh, and there Hopes for justice that was alive and well became hopes of justice that seemed doomed and dead. Amen. Their hope for a better tomorrow appeared doomed and dead. Look at what they say. If your Bible is like mine, it starts off with a but. Uh, in verse 21, but go back to verse 20. He says, and he was mighty indeed, and how the chief priests and rulers, our rulers, our rulers, condemned him and crucified him. Their hopes for justice seemed doomed and dead because their hope was crushed by people in power. Amen. Their hopes for justice, their hopes for tomorrow, literally was crushed because their hope was in Jesus. Uh, was crushed. Why? Because of 
uh, the chief priests and our rulers, where rulers means those that's given administrative authority over us, those are our political leaders, our rulers had him condemned and crucified. He suffered a political execution. Amen. That's what the crucifixion, it was a political execution. The name King of the Jews was the official uh, crime of the state that he suffered the death penalty under. Amen. And if you get around and get to messing with people in power too much, people in power don't give up power easily. Next thing you know, you're out of here. Start messing with people's political power. Their money that <laughs> funds their elaborate trips and different things. Yeah. Get, get, start, 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 start messing with rules that keeps status quo in place. Start messing with things. <laughs> that starts disrupting and making people in power uneasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you become what Jesus said in the, in, the, in the Sermon on the Mount. You'll get persecuted for righteousness sake. But I don't know about you today, but I'd rather be persecuted for righteousness sake than to be silent and be part of the problem. Because silence helps those who are doing stuff that causes people to live in redemptive needing situations. Silence is, cap is capitulating to the picture that you see. Jesus was, yeah, taken out of here because he challenged the people in power. He challenged yeah, those who were the rulers and chief priests. They could not have Jesus or no more of these 5,000 plus men and children, women and children, mass meetings. Somebody one day, he going to let them crown him king. <laughs> we got to get rid of this cat. That's one of the ways you can tell you're starting to make a difference because folks are start putting out stuff on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. They start, they that start, they start calling Christian folk bullies. I don't want to meet with them bill folk. They bullies. No, we just, we just fighters for justice. And last time I checked, justice isn't just freely handed down by folk in power. You and I didn't get the rights that we have simply because they just finally one day decided, oh, let's do the right thing. <laughs> Not like somebody had woke up one morning and just had a, a justice epiphany. Let's bless black folk. No. <laughs> Some folk had to go to bat. <laughs> have I got a witness? Had to do a little marching. <laughs> had to take a little water hosing. Had to take a little dog biting to get where we are right now. And if the struggle ain't over, that means there's still some more fighting that's got to be done. Have I got a witness? Jesus, yeah, was the one that brought hope. And so they took hope out. And so therefore the people's hope appeared as if their hopes for justice was doomed and dead. Amen. But this is what I like about this. Even though they thought their hopes for justice was doomed and dead because their hope was crushed by people and power. Amen. But look what hope did in the text. Hope showed up on a dusty road. Amen. The hope they thought was crushed <laughs> showed up not at the church house. 
the hope they thought was crushed didn't show up at a prayer meeting. The hope they thought was crushed didn't show up at a city council meeting. We got to be present in all them places. Don't get me wrong. All those places are good. But notice here, hope showed up on a dusty road from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Dusty because they didn't have paved roads between Jerusalem and Emmaus. Dusty, dust feel, dirty, feet dusty, <laughs> non-paved road. Hope showed up in a dusty place with two people that was grieved and disappointed. That's what I love about my Jesus. He'll show up in your dusty places in life. He'll show up in your places of grief and disappointment. Jesus will show up when you least expect it. He'll show up and talk with you even when you don't recognize he's present right there with you. Have I got a witness? Jesus is a savior that will show up in your grief, show up in your disappointment, show up on the unexpected places. Jesus show up in places you never thought he would show up, but I'm glad Jesus is not limited by space and location. He'll show up wherever you are. And that's the challenge for us today. Who are we willing to show up for? Who are we willing to show up for? Where are we willing to show up? For whom are we willing to show up? Jesus was the presence of hope on a dusty road filled with grief and disappointment. But Jesus' presence was there to let them know, even though it seems as if your hopes have been dashed and dead, it all ain't over yet. A brighter tomorrow is still possible. It's still on the horizons. Jesus showed up to let them know all was not lost. Who are we willing to show up for? Are we willing to show up for the 14,000 families? They're still choosing between paying rent, medicine, and buying groceries. Remember I told you how different the narrative would have been if there was no table and no house. 14,000 families still finding themselves dealing with the threat of not having a table or a house because of the lack of affordable housing. Who are you willing to show up for? The thousands of mentally, uh, mental illness persons within our city who cannot get to their appointments because the bus system currently either does not run to where they live or it takes them a whole day to get to an appointment that's 20 minutes from their location. And if you've ever had any type of anxieties before, what if you have an anxiety and just being on a bus with crowded people trips you out? But you got to get to your appointment because you don't get to your appointment or your medicine, you're going to be more messed up than what you are right now. For those of us who can get to our meds, You know what it's like when you can't get to your meds, when you can't get to your doctor's appointments. Who will you show up for? I understand that they're saying that violence numbers are not a lower than what they were on last year. But remember, that's been said before. And before the summer is over with. We back higher than what we were or what was projected. Praise God for our chief, 
I please want to thank God for them, all that are worth that they're doing. Thank God for me. We, we thank God for them. We want to keep them lifted in our prayers. But just because we're praying for them does not alleviate from continuing to let them know that we love them and want the best for them and our community and continue to push them for things that we've researched, that we believe that will make our city better. Who are we willing to show up for? Families that have to stand in dusty graveyards to bury a loved one who suffered from violence that could have possibly been pre prevented. Jesus showed up on a dusty road in grief and disappointment to let them know keep hope alive. Have I got a witness? In spite of how dire and dreary it may be, Jesus, the resurrected Savior, is still showing up, letting folks know that he still cares. And can I tell you who Jesus' representatives are today? You and I. So we have the privilege of being Jesus on somebody's Emmaus Road. Somebody needs to know that there's still hope for a better tomorrow. So on the Emmaus Road, Justice and Jesus showed up. And the mere fact that, that, that the two on the Emmaus Road, amen, Justice was alive and well. Justice seemed dead and doomed. But Justice was, or their hope for Justice, was renewed and rekindled. As they continued walking with Jesus, Jesus, your Lord and my Savior, walked with them. And they got to Emmaus, and they thought that uh, he was going to keep on walking. They said, no, please, stay with us a little while longer. And he sat down with them and began to continue to discuss with them the scriptures of who Jesus was. And they sat there around the table and the Bible says he took bread. Yes, he did. Jesus went into somebody else's house <laughs> and played the role of host. Yes. That's what I like about Jesus. He'll step into your own house and turn your own house into his meat room. He stepped into their house, took their bread, broke their bread, blessed their bread, gave them back their bread, and then their eyes were opened. And I don't know about you, but whatever Jesus wants to take of mine and use for his benefit to open my eyes, Jesus, take whatever you need. <laughs> Have I got a with Jesus, my house is your house. Me casa su casa, whatever you want to do, Jesus, and come into my house. Oh, let's get out of here today. He took their bread, <laughs> blessed their bread, gave them their bread, opened their eyes, and then left again. But then they could have stayed right there, but they didn't stay right there. Their hopes for tomorrow was so renewed was so kindled. They said, did not our hearts burn while he talked with us about the scriptures? The hope we thought we had lost, hope is alive and well. And they got up. That same journey they just made ran all the way back to Jerusalem and said, hey, 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 I know y'all thought hope was dead, but we met Jesus tonight. And when you meet Jesus, it ought to move you, it ought to get you up, it ought to cause you to rise up and build. Justice and Jesus on the road to Emmaus. They had hopes for justice that were alive and well. Their hopes appeared doomed and dead. But in seeing Jesus, their hopes for justice was renewed and rekindled. 
may we do what we can to bring hope for a better tomorrow to those who stand in need of a better tomorrow. Amen. Let's give God some praise today. Come on, the invitation is being extended. There may be someone here who has not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We invite you to come, 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 come. Give your life to him. After all, he came that you might have life and have life more abundantly. He came so you could experience not just a better tomorrow, but as we learn in the Bible study, we're not just created for time, we're created for eternity. But in order to spend your eternity with Jesus, you got to accept him as your Lord and your Savior. He is the gateway to eternity. He is the door through which the sheep must enter. He's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. If you've not accepted Jesus today, this Jesus we just talked about that brings hopes, this Jesus that verifies that he's alive and well to let you know that hope is better, this same Jesus wants to use you not just to bless you, but to use you to help be a blessing to somebody else. If you're ready to have a different life, a transformed life, we offer to you the change agent. His name is Jesus. We welcome you to come. Maybe in our virtual space, you really make a life commitment. May reach us 859-252-7191 as our choir compares to sing. I am taking selection. May reach us also by Facebook Messenger or via our website, fabclex.org. Contact us if you're here today or maybe you're looking for a church home. Our arms are open wide. We're not a perfect church. Not perfect, but we're a church on mission, trying to fulfill the mission of being the church in the community for the hearts of the community. The invitation is extended. Is there one today? We welcome you to come. Is there one? is there one?
If you're thankful today, give him some more praise. Give him some more praise. Amen. We thank him for the ways that he has made in our lives. Give our children another hand today. We thank God for them. Awesome job, children. Great job. Amen. And to God be the glory. Amen. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow at Central Bank Center. Doors open at 6.30, 7 o'clock. We start off our Nehemiah action. Again, if you would like to ride the church bus, church van will be here. Amen. Meet at 6. Amen. We will leave promptly at 6.15. Or maybe if you like to carpool with someone, those who like to carpool may come here as well and be ready to roll by 6.15 as well. God bless you and God can continue to keep you as we strive to do those things that are pleasing and acceptable in his sight. If you enjoyed the worship today, give him some more praise. Amen. God bless you. Come on and receive our benediction as we prepare to shift from our church and worship to our church and study during our church education hour. God bless you. God, how we thank you for caring not only for our soul. But we thank you for caring enough to care about the conditions that our souls have to live in. Thank you for caring what goes on around us. Thank you for caring for what affects us in our daily lives. We thank you that you came not only to give us life, but that we may also have life in all of its abundance. So as you've made a way for us, use us to continue to make ways for others. And then God, we embrace the role that in making ways for others, we might have to cause waves for others. Whatever ways we need to create, to make ways for somebody's life to be better, use us to the glory of your name. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest ruling by with all of us henceforth and forever. Let all of God's children say amen, amen, and amen. Remember, we love you, we love you, and God loves you too. Give him some more praise today as we depart from this place of worship. God bless you.